Hi and welcome back. This is part two of our networking guide. If you have not seen the first part, go ahead and stop here. Check out the link in the description. Check out that video first and that'll get, catch you up to speed. So we're gonna jump right in. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first thing we're gonna talk about is talk about templates and packages. So the templates and packages are stored on the server. But what's really important is that they're saved inside your X drive. You don't want to save them inside the users folder in the photos folder. They should be saved inside X. Very specifically because that is the drive that is shared to the clients. So if you save a graphic, let's say to your desktop, then that graphic is not available on the client computer. And we can look at that right here. I have a uh, an example. If I go to my templates, I have one that's set as good graphic, one that says bad graphic. From the server, which we're logged into currently, everything looks fine. We look at this graphic. It's saved on my desktop. <clears throat> but let's uh, minimize this go into core edition from the client now I apologize I know this is really confusing seeing all this on the same computer but these are two different computers if I look at that same template and I double click on it you can see the graphic is missing it's because it's looking on my desktop on this computer when it's actually saved on the other so it's a real simple fix. Let's switch back over to the server. I'm gonna double click on that. You wanna save all your templates, all your graphics inside your X drive. And how I do it is um, <clears throat> under templates, orders, I have my templates and then I have this demo folder so if I update it with that graphic the same graphic just in a different location now it's relative to X and on my client computer it would be still relative so we'll double check that we'll just save it minimize and just so it refreshes now when we double, uh, double click on it, <coughs> excuse me, the graphic is available. So it's really important to save all of your templates and graphics to your X drive. So next thing we're going to do is <coughs> I'm going to switch back over to the server. We're going to add a printer. One thing you'll notice in the client is you don't have printer options, but that is available on the server. So I have a, um, a GS40 connected. Whoops. I'll click add printer. Now connect a GS40. It's physically connected. So I'm going to add it. It sees the printer is available. That printer still will not show up on the client because it's all processed by the server. But it will be available to the client and as I promised what we uh, I'd show you is I'm gonna add a printer that's connected physically to the client computer but we're gonna add it as a shared printer to the server and then add that printer to um, darkroom pro so we're switching back to the client computer and it's a little label printer. I'm gonna go to my printers. It's right there. And I'm going to <clears throat> click manage and then properties and then sharing. Apply and okay. So <clears throat> now on the server, we're going to add that printer as a Windows printer. 
and um, you might run into an error. If you get an error code, just look up the error code in uh, Google or YouTube and you should be able to find a guide uh, on how to fix it. Usually you have to go into the registry or something like that. So we'll switch over to server computer and this has to be done in Windows so get a um, let me see. Printers. Add printer. And it's not going to show because it's a network printer. <clears throat> or a shared printer. The printer is not listed. So I'm going to click and select a shared printer by a name. And now it's going to go into my network. And it should pull up my client. Okay. So this can happen every once in a while. What we're going to see is if we can access the client computer. It's essentially the exact opposite of what we did when we connected the client to the server. So it's not showing my, my um, core computer where the printer is attached. So let's minimize it to try to stay as organized as possible. Let me go to this PC, uh, properties, and then grab that computer name. And this is a very similar thing to what we did when we were connecting the server, but we did the other way around. So click slash slash, paste in the server name or the client name. That's the cl uh, client computer name. And there's my little dime opener. So I should be able to also double click here and it'll connect the printer and add it. And that's probably an easier way. Just go to your network, double click on the pr uh, computer from the printer. Double click on the printer in the computer on the network. So next, we go ahead and close out of this. There it's added to the server. <clears throat> I click add printer and browse down to Windows printers. And so if this was a directly supported printer, like um, uh, any one of those directly supported printers, you would still have to add it as a Windows printer. You can't add it as a directly supported printer when it's a shared printer. Just a, uh, something to keep in mind. There's my demo. And I have it set for credit card. <clears throat> And then we'll go to properties and we just want to make sure everything's set up right for the printer driver. Okay. And we'll go ahead and test that out. I have a... <clears throat> Uh, package already set up as a label printer. I uh, select an image, click label printer, and there it prints out. Here's what printed out <clears throat> it is a image with a barcode. I can then attach this to an order form and be able to track my images a little bit better. So that might be good. You might want to do a QR code. You want, might want to just directly print your, uh, let's say a five by seven from that client to that printer. So what that brings up is if you have more than one client with more than one Windows printer, shared Windows printer attached, how do you make sure that that print from that computer 
doesn't print out on a different, let's say five by seven printer at a different client. So what we can do is add a, um, a what's called a media roll. Um, we're gonna set it to accept matching prints only. <clears throat> So in that situation, you might, might want to say client one is your media type. I'm going to call it label because it's label paper, but you might have uh, client one, client two, and then on your package, here's my label printer. I'm gonna just make sure I type the exact same name. Uh, and that will make sure that that specific package goes to that specific printer. Um, and then you just wanna test it out just to make sure it's still going. In this case, I have, I might have a, an ID card printer or a label printer, they're both the same size. I'm using label because it's a label printer. If I uh, set up an ID card printer, I would then set that for a media type of ID card. I can use whatever custom media type I want. I don't have to use the ones that are built into it. So we'll just test it out one more time. And it's printing so we know that the, the media type is working properly. Uh, if I were to remove that media type from the label package, it would then not go to that printer. It has to have, essentially that's the lock and key to access that printer, the, the package has the key. So this is, this concludes <laughs> part two of networking. Uh, this is a little bit more deep dive into more of the technical parts of what Darkroom can do. A, a lot of this is gonna be well uh, beyond and above what many users are looking to do. And this is made specifically for some of the more advanced users that are networking and need multiple workstations, multiple employees to work a job. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, add a comment and I'll see maybe we'll come out with a networking part three in the future. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now. Thanks again for watching. Here are a couple of videos that YouTube thinks that you might enjoy. Be sure to like, subscribe, but more importantly, if there's something you want to learn a little bit more about, comment below this video and I'll do my best to add it as a future video. I'll see you in the next one.